Hello everyone and welcome back to my JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.7.3. In this episode, I'm contemplating this land on the moon contract. Now, of course, we're not going to land with the Kerbal and it doesn't require a Kerbal apparently. Of course, in stock it would require a Kerbal, but, or at least highly suggested. Uh, but unfortunately, because we haven't unlocked the mission control building, uh, or at least level 2 of it, uh, we can't get both uh, that and the science data from the surface of the moon contract if we want to keep our existing put a Kerbal into orbit for 30 days contract. So, well, that's a bit of a rub, but, you know, we'll be able to do science data from the surface of the moon some other time. Um, so, uh, somebody in the comments mentioned that we won't get the rescue contracts until we can EVA, of course, that makes sense. I should have known that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we probably won't be doing Kerbal missions until we do that, because I don't want to risk Jeb again. <laughs> um, so we have learned, we have learned, of course, that we need to have launch clamps and launch escape systems. Thank you, Sir Modermer. And, yeah, the thing about that is, the thing about that is... I don't think we've got the stock launch clamps, so I don't know where the heck Kerbalism thought we would get launch clamps from. Because, uh, I mean, assuming that we were playing stock instead of uh, having the BDB, because I think these facet parts are added by BDB. So they wouldn't have known that I had BDB, in which case any Kerbal would have died unless it had a launch escape system, right? I mean, in that case, we do have launch escape systems. But not the stock ones. These are just the BDB uh, launch escape systems, I think. So, recommendation. If you're playing with Kerbalism, you better be playing with BDB because they're not going to give you the launch escape systems or the launch clamps to save your Kerbal in the, in the poor scenario that uh, Valentina found herself in. So, just a note about that. Either that, uh, Kerbalism might want to like get some community tech tree thing going and move some of the launch clamps and launch escape systems earlier on, or inform us that we should not learn launch Kerbals so early, I don't know. Maybe that's somewhere in the documentation. Anyway, let me cook up a probe to land on the moon, and we will see what we can do. It has occurred to me very quickly that we are not going to be able to do this within the 18 ton limit that we currently have. That is not going to work out. So, launch pad upgrade. So now we have 140 tons to work with, which should be more than enough, but of course that cost us. So one possible question at this juncture is how would I estimate how much it takes to land on the moon and get back into orbit again around the moon and possibly get back home? Uh, so first of all, uh, on getting back to orbit around the moon, I would probably just use this escape velocity. Remember the escape velocity ends up being the orbital velocity multiplied by 1.4. So it's it gives you a nice margin as uh, in terms of getting back to orbit over the actual orbital velocity around the moon. So 1066. Then on top of that, I'll probably add 200 to do the landing uh, because, you know, landing is a little bit finicky. And so we're looking at uh, 2200, uh, well, uh, 2300 and a little bit for both. And then, let's say, to get back home, well, uh, stock Kerbin to get to the moon was 800, and to get back home is normally about 250, 200 to 250. Um, then, to go, go to the moon in realism overhaul takes about 3,000, and to get back home takes about 800 to 1,000. Uh, so, basically four times as much as stock. We saw in this that it takes about 1,500 to get to the moon, so it's sort of in the middle. It's double stock, and it's half of realism overhaul. So I'm going to assume I will split the difference. So I'm going to say 400 to 500. That's double what it is in stock and half of what it is in realism overhaul. So that's my estimate for being able to break orbit and get back home. And that's probably that's the same as my estimate for making orbit in the first place. So those are just estimates. If I didn't have a delta V map or didn't have the ability to calculate uh, by hand, now the contract requires that we return the capsule back home, right? And so I'm not planning to transmit the data ahead of time. So we're not going to carry a heavier transmitter. We want to land on the moon and return to carbon from the surface of the moon. This probe core has 
nearly enough. We'll probably add some supplementary comms to it like before. Uh, I think four Commutatron 8s were found to be good enough, so we'll do that. Mm, just like this. Okay, and then so this is... Well, this was able to return it from orbit of Herbin. I don't know if it's good enough to... Uh, a heavy, I guess we should have a heavy one. There's a medium, there's a heavy, and an extra heavy. I don't know if that improves its... I mean, there's this all, 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 the section thing too. I don't know what the section thing does for me either. Maybe I should just use one of the other heat shields. This, uh, this SSTU heat shield seems rather complicated, doesn't it? Okay, none of the heat shield seems to have heat shield jettison on it, which makes me a little bit suspicious that we're missing something. So, just a reminder, there's the advanced tweakables. Ah, they need to be enabled. I guess extended burn indicator, why not? Except, all right, that'll solve the problem. Now we can jettison our heat shields. One annoyance I have right now is that we just don't have tanks small enough. I would like really, really small tanks for this. But I think the smallest tank we have is either this one or, um, well, this one. And neither is particularly what I'm looking for here, but I guess we'll have to make do. Okay, well I've had to scale back my expectations for this launch at least, because we do have a 30 part limit. And so trying to sneak it all under that limit, I don't know if I can manage to bring it back home safely. But in any case, I've tried to make it as light as possible. I trimmed off the goo containers, we're just carrying the thermometer and Geiger counter this time along with the main probe. We've got these little solar panels. I unlocked the Commutatron 16 so we could use two instead of four. Of course we have the parachute. Uh, we've got that 1.25 meter heat shield. This is the stock one this time. And um, we do want to stage heat shield jettison so we've got that there after the parachute deploys. Now, of course, we have a small decoupler here, uh, 0.625 meter. And then we have a Fenris 360 fuel tank, and then a Decker engine, which we've used high quality in this case. And we're looking to use multiple ignitions for that. That's going to be used to capture into orbit. I mean, actually, it, it's going to be used for a lot of things. Um, at least we're going to capture into orbit, land, I don't know if we're even going to have enough to take off again with the Delta V we have right now. But we might be using it for part of the transfer burn too. Uh, actually, I expect that. We have two Deckers down here, also high quality. And then a Bossert tank there. More Bossert tanks here. And then we have a cluster of four Merlin 1Bs, high quality, down there. And that gives us... 1.43 in vacuum, but sea level 1.25, so just barely able to lift off there. Total mass is 46 tons, so obviously making use of the launch pad. I totally would have added uh, boosters on here, but we didn't have the part count for that, I don't think. So, yeah, that's why I put the launch clamps. Otherwise, I would put boosters instead of launch clamps. Uh, I didn't think... Uh, oh, uh, one other limiting factor was the fact that we don't have... Uh, um, radial separators. Yeah, we only have inline separators. We don't have any radial decouplers, so we couldn't put boosters like that. So, yeah. Possible to put another sort of booster at the bottom, maybe? That would have been possible. But, uh, well, there is a big solid booster there, but I don't think it has enough thrust, actually. Uh, that's 439 kilonewtons. This alone already can barely lift this off the ground. And I think four of those is 560 kilonewtons. So, yeah. Not good enough, that booster. Probably other boosters around. This one might be big enough. Prometheus. Anyway, we'll take a look at that on the next try after we see how much more we need. But uh, we'll go with this for now. And we'll at least try to land. Now, I didn't put landing legs because of the part count situation again. 
So we've just we're just gotta try and land on the engine per usual. I assume Kerbalism has not come up with a countermeasure for for me doing that. We'll find out. Alright, so returner two. We do have to somewhat be concerned about uh, communications. Uh, we'll see how that sorts itself out. Okay, throttle is up, SAS is on, and ignition and launch. Launch. <laughs> I don't want to waste the Delta V here, come on. Alright. Very straight rocket. Sort of reminiscent of a Zenit, especially with the four nozzles at the bottom. Really, the struggle to unlock the buildings is significant. Probably I shouldn't even be trying for the moon. I should just be going for more Kerbin orbit satellites or something. Just to make money. Okay, separation and ignition. Okay, we have two good engines. Let's get the fairing off here. Part of the problem with designing this was the lack of small tanks. We would have been able to add a more substantial stage for the probe with a nice small tank up there if I had like an Oscar B or something. And, you know, little thrusters. So we'll have to work on that. Hopefully we'll get some science out of this, though. Transmitting it back is gonna take forever. So I was I decided to use this Inon engine mounting plate to get the two engines on. Just for looks. It's got built-in RCS that we're not using right now. This sort of makes it look like a centaur. We are not at this point using cryogenic engines, though. So yeah, we will need uh, this stage to complete the transfer burn. In addition to doing the rest. Okay, that is in orbit. And we still have plenty of burn time on these engines. Okay. Because these commsats are way too far out, the internal comms and the Commutron 16 here, uh, these combined just don't have enough range. Let's see. This has a direct range of 2,000 kilometers, and then each of these has 2,000 kilometers. So they can manage 6,000 kilometers if we just straight up add them out, but these two satellites are 28,000 kilometers or more away. So we need another satellite constellation uh, closer in, I think, if we're going to mitigate the thing. I mean, those those two are beyond geosynchronous orbit right now. Okay, well, that's the moon, that tiny little dot. Prograde. Taking a look at communications. I think we'll get through the burn without losing it. Let's see, what altitude are we going for here? 89,000. Okay, separation and ignition. Okay, that's past the target apoapsis. Uh, by a lot, actually. Well, I guess we'll get a shot of it departing Kerbin with the sun and all. Here. Yeah, well, not the best angle. It's going butt in first, but. Ooh. Come on, Moon. You can do it. Okay. Uh, that is pretty radial. That's gonna hurt us. Okay, ignition. Okay, 36 kilometers seems fine to me. We are recharging. Okay, we have lost signal, as expected. And we've got signal back, just in time. Good. Okay, ignition.
Okay, I'll take that, 57 by 29. So obviously we'll want to try and land on the side that we actually have communication on. Fortunately, it's in the dark. But, um... Maybe we can swing it over here. Maybe that'll be good enough. Uh, the curvings like that. Yeah, somewhere over here-ish. Okay, so right now I'll do a small retro burn. Descent initiation burn. And we want to have the orbit go right into the ground. We could use Mechjeb's landing guidance, but I'll skip that because probably I shouldn't even have it unlocked at this point. So something like that will do. And then once we get over the target area, we'll, or just ahead of the target area, we'll retro. The goal here is to get a low orbit, but one with enough clearance so that we don't hit anything on our way to the target area. That, that's important. Better sooner rather than later. But, I mean, well, the problem with a crater is it might be too low to get the sunlight. So maybe we'll wait a little bit. Uh, we also don't want to lose communication. The highlands might be a better deal because of the sunlight issue. We could stand to wait a little bit longer though. We are landing on the bottom of the nozzle, so not the best thing. Here we go, the surface negative. And we gotta be monitoring the vertical speed. And we gotta make full use of the long burn time here. So we'll throttle down and everything. Gotta rotate to make sure that one of our panels ends up facing the sun when we finally touch down. So basically here, we are allowing the vertical speed to go down, but uh, not too fast. Definitely not more than 100 meters per second, but it depends on what kind of thrust weight ratio you have. We have a pretty high thrust weight ratio, so we could have gone down steeper. I'm not too sure. I don't want this slope here. Uh, I think we're gonna be over here somewhere, maybe over here. I don't know. We'll keep the burn time indication up. I don't anticipate any problems with it. We'll definitely run out of fuel long before we run out of burn time. Uh, I guess for reference. So, if you want to extend your approach, you know, go a little bit further along, you can pitch up. Basically getting into a hover. And sort of coast along in this way, I don't want that edge. So I'm being picky and I'll probably hurt our ability to return. Okay, surface altitude would be good now. Uh, change to that pitch, turn that off, SAS is on, or kill rotation will work too. And now one way of doing this is just to take the altitude and divide by 10, and that's your maximum speed. It depends on what thrust to weight ratio you have. So I could be going down much faster than I am right now, but I'm being cautious, I suppose. Oh, so my steering does not seem to have a lot of leeway, so... It's uh, slow to respond. Taking an extra ignition. There's a bit big of an engine to be doing this with. You'd want to make sure that when you throttle down, you can go down. It's really at the very bottom of the throttle range to allow us to still go down. Oh no. Oh, 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 We've, we're in this problem again. Well, I've been here before. The reaction wheel just isn't powerful enough. I thought about putting RCS thrusters on here. I unlocked some, but didn't do that. Uh, does this count as landed? Yes. Well, there's that. We will see whether we get anywhere past this. Okay, so I'll now do the radiation and temperature stuff. I just didn't want to clog up the hard drive uh, earlier bits. I know somebody said just have them running right at the start, but 
Are we transmitting signs? We are, but it's at 15 bytes per second. And our electric charge is ticking down because we're in our own shadow now. So that sucks. Will we hit the bottom before we run out of electric charge? That is the question. I'm guessing the answer is no. We are pointed prograde. I'm just going to give the engine a go. We don't have a whole lot more to do with this as it is right now. Let's see. Oh, 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 no. Uh, oh, oh, it, the, the little vernier is pushing us down, I think. Hmm. Well, we can maybe use that to our advantage. Uh, or not. Uh. Why can't you point the other way then? Come on. Oh. Oh, it all blew up. <laughs> okay, well, I tipped over on the moon again. But we landed. We got that contract done. Well, that part of the contract done. Alright, back to Space Center. So, on the surface of the moon, we had about 1,300 meters per second left. And I had previously said that we wanted 1,044 or so, or was it 1,066, anyway, uh, to get back to orbit. And then we're looking at about 500, with, that's a little bit buff, of buffer there, to get back to Kerbin. So we're about 200 or so short, which is not a whole lot. But it's also very apparent that we need landing legs. So, yeah, uh, we had two sort of parts to work with because we're at 28 out of 30. We could take off the launch clamps, put on the, the landing struts, but then we would be reducing our delta V and we wouldn't have any way of adding more delta V. So, I think what we need to do is... I mean, I, there's just no more efficient setup as far as the rocket itself is concerned. And without any small tanks, we can't really do anything to add a new stage to this either. Um, as far as we could uh, think about putting a smaller engine here, but the smaller engines aren't anywhere near as efficient as the Decker. The Decker has uh, 311, the problem, and it's a 175 kilogram engine. You know, we had this chrysalis, but the chrysalis, even though it's a smaller engine, it's only got six kilonewtons and any, everything. The ISP is not that much lower, but the problem is it only has one ignition and two with high quality. So I'll take a look at the options. This other chrysalis, this Hunter one, uh, also has only one or two. And so that is a key issue here. I think we should probably make some more money and get rid of this part count limit. As much as interesting as it was in the stock series to have a part count limit to get my creative juices flowing, maybe we don't want to have that in this case. But 450,000, so we can't afford it right now. And we have our max contract. So I think the first thing we're going to do is actually unlock mission control so that we can get more contracts. And we'll need uh, 300,000 for the tracking station upgrade so that we can finally get patch conics. But getting to the moon has not been a problem, so there is that. We need 150,000 for the EVA so we can rescue Kerbals, but it's a little bit tight right now on the budget. Um, orbital station. A position of satellite in a specific orbit of the moon sounds like something that we could do. Okay, so, and then there's a satellite around Minmus. We haven't gone to Minmus yet. I just sort of forgot the, about the existence of Minmus since this was so close to the Earth-Moon system. Uh, but, okay, so let's try those two. And we'll make them relay satellites. We'll make them relay satellites, and that'll help for later. Uh, it still doesn't bring us up uh, enough, and even if we get them done, I don't know if we'll have uh, 450. So we'll have to do a lot more of these and hope that they give them to us. I mean... We need more ComSat contracts. We'll see, though. Okay, so I'm starting to build this uh, satellite style that we're going to launch to both the Moon and Minmus. But I have to make a point. 
Uh, I'm a little bit tired of seeing the rate of burn time 5 minutes 50 and 23 minutes 20 for every single engine. Um, if it's going to have 73 radiated ignitions, maybe it should have more burn time. <laughs> I mean, and if this is going to be an AJ-10 replica, that those are rated for quite a long time, actually. Um, and admittedly, quite a lot of ignitions. But every single engine has the same rated burn time. Okay, well, this assembly sort of begs for auto strut, but we don't have auto strut. Uh, what we have here is a stage up here that will handle most of the transfer and get it into the correct orbit, hopefully. The Delta V's are pretty tight. I might want to switch rockets to something a little bit more capable, we'll see. Got a whole bunch of these helical antennas, which are the only relay antennas that we've got. Of course, our favorite probe core, some battery power, and the contracts required uh, goo and thermometer minimum. So we've got a thermometer... Um, can I actually reach that thermometer anymore, or...? Uh, okay, we can reach the thermometer. Alright, so we've got a thermometer and a, a Geiger counter, and both of the contracts, that's all they need. So, and of course we can generate power. So that's all good. Uh, this engine is a high-quality Alpha Star engine. Okay, so the Alpha Star uh, 9 kilonewtons 278 ISP not the best but lots of ignitions and hopefully fairly reliable we'll see but high high quality on that uh, here we've got our favorite Decker which is also high quality but at the bottom we have two standard quality Merlin 1Bs so shiny as they are uh, we're going cheap on those all right let's try it out it might be short on Minmus. Heck, it might be short for the moon. We'll see. Depends how onerous getting into the exact correct orbit ends up being. Given that, you know, we can't plot things. It's swaying. I said I, I would really like auto strut on this, but we don't have auto strutting yet. I think we have to actually unlock struts first, right? All right, so uh, SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition and launch. <laughs> this is somewhat reminiscent of a Thor rocket, but mostly not. Thor rockets had these really thin stages, and actually, largely for the same reason, they were fitting the AJ-10 uh, engines. Next stage doesn't have a huge thrust to weight ratio, 0.72 only, so we do want to get this lobbed up a little bit higher. I guess that'll have to do. We have a good ignition on the second stage. Unfortunately can't see the time to apoapsis, so... I'll uh, keep it here for now, just in case. Again, thrust weight ratio a bit low. Maybe 30 degrees is fine. One downside is our solar panels are in here. So we're going to have to wait on those. Delta V wise, I think we're looking okay. It, again, depends on how much it takes to get into the correct orbits. Getting into orbit around the moon no problem. I suppose we will start off the science. Okay, and shut down. 105 by 97. We have 721 meters per second left in this stage, so estimating right now we have about 1,000 meters per second to make whatever orbit we need to at our target, which is... The moon, which we still can't actually target. Okay. So with the four helical antennas, um, the combined range is uh, 32,000 kilometers, and then plus this is 34,000 kilometers. That's to another probe, right? Well, I don't know if the relay stuff will actually use this antenna. Hopefully, They'll use all four of these, so 
something 32,000 kilometers away would be able to use this as a relay. Uh, it should also be able to use those two as a relay once it gets to the right location. Now, where's the moon? The moon is over here. So where we'll be burning out is over here, here-ish. And that's not where those are right now. We have a limited amount of time because of the electric charge, so we can't just keep orbiting all, all day long. Uh, well, I mean, it should be able to communicate with those. I'm a little bit peeved it's not. Uh, yeah, why can't it use those as a relay? They both seem connected. DSN connected. I'm pretty sure I made them relays because that was the whole point. But maybe it's because they don't have 32,000. I deliberately put 32,000 on this so that it could get to them. But I guess both ends needs 32,000. Not sure. Okay, we've got signal. I think we can make the transfer burn here. All right, separation and ignition. That's an interesting look. Very pink. Okay, let's get the solar panels extended. And that's what we've got. Now our target orbit is going to be, well, roughly 4,000 kilometers. Inclination 148 degrees, though. Hmm. That's a bit of a problem. Because that's, like, retrograde and all sorts of nasty business. And because the moon is equatorial, we're definitely going to end up equatorial on the initial approach. Okay, shut down. Okay, a little bit past as usual. Now oh, we got radiation scan. Alright, that'll be better. We got the photographic image data, moon space low. Okay, well... Um, at least we're going the right way around. The question is, should I bring the orbit down in? You know, bring the periapsis in first and make use of the moon's gravity or not. Because after all, we're going to have to boost up again. Okay, ignition. Uh, I think that'll be a modest delta V usage. I'm thinking about the whole inclination change thing and maybe it's not such a great idea. All right, we'll just go. Also, oh, communications might be helped by us being a little bit more distant from the moon. Oh, electric charge. From this view, it's further out from the moon than I thought it was, but then again, this is the MUN moon, not MON moon. Okay, ignition. You know, it would have been good to combine inclination change here, maybe. Um... Not quite, though. We're a little bit far off from that. Let's stop there. I want to do an inclination change over on the other side. Presumably it's not lying about me having captured, is it? <laughs> I'll do a little bit more. Okay, 20 more minutes and 807 meters per second left. So... We've got one node here, but really we want to use this one to do the inclination change. Let's hope we don't accidentally get out of the sphere of influence of the moon, even though it showed I captured. When it doesn't have patch conics, sometimes it does that nonsense. Oh, it did it. It did it. Gosh darn you. Am I going to re-get in there or not? No. Well, Minmus is over there. We might accidentally go over to Minmus now. 
I wonder what the boundary of the SOI is. I should check that later. Coronal mass ejection. Well, we don't have to worry about that for the moment. Got a photographic image, though. Mimus has this inclination, though we sort of... No, we don't really cross it there. We would cross it at Apoapsis here, though. So I am going to not go retrograde. I want prograde, lift that up uh, so that will let, uh, uh, let us catch up to Minmus. At periapsis, I'll bring the Apoapsis down. The Apoapsis looks like it would cross Minmus's orbit. Okay, I don't know if that's enough. We'll see. Um, let's make sure we're recharging. Um, now we're way ahead. We'll have to do another burn at Apoapsis to slow down. Just want to go a little bit past Minmus's orbit to slow down, let Minmus catch up. And hopefully this approach is close enough. We can adjust that at Apoapsis. Uh, let's make sure we're turning towards the sun again. More coronal mass ejection. It's been 177 days, geez. Taking our time with these things. Got a radiation scan though. Kerman Space Solar Storm. Extra special radiation scan that. Well, good thing we've got a lot of ignitions on this because we're using a whole lot. Not a hundred, but we're using a whole lot. Well, the sun seems pretty active these days. Yeah, it just keeps... You think it's unstable? I mean, seriously. Just on this orbit, I've had like four of these coronal mass ejections. Another one, five. Okay, okay. Wow. <laughs> I don't trust it though. This is obviously not true. Obviously not true. Are we on our way into periapsis though? Okay, well let's make sure we capture first. We need to go eastward, I guess. Let, let's uh, go up to this point. That would be a good place to tilt our orbit. And from here, we'll go part retrograde, part east. That's west. Or you could also think of it as south that we need to do. We need to go south. Okay, ignition. Oh, wrong throttle. Ignition. Okay, we need to be more retrograde. Okay, more inclination. Okay, let's stop it there. It's a bit close on the other end, but anyway, I think we are at least in an actual orbit this time. At least you got gotten a world's first for that. Um, entered orbit of Minmus. Okay. No storage space. I thought as much. And it's all photographic image data. Clogging everything up. Minmus space high. We'll do that later. Oh, everything clogged it up at once. Stop. Stop with the... Photographic. I need to stop the photographic. That's what's happening. Okay, let's get rid of that. Get everything else first. 132 bytes per second. It's gonna take a while. We don't have the big antennas. Got the radiation scan. Got the temperature scan. And we got a Minmus space solar storm for that coronal mass ejection. Okay, that looks pretty in line now. Okay, so what's the inclination? Minus one? They should give that to us, surely. We'll lift the periapsis now and I think it'll be all right. Sun again. So obviously I chose the Alpha Star 
despite its relatively low ISP because it has so many ignitions, and that has become very handy. It says no data now. We should probably do some more experiments then. I guess the photographic data would be good if it can manage to do it. Still gonna take a long time to transmit it, I think. It says uh, 4 hours, 19 minutes, and 22 seconds, but since it's not proceeding on that, actually it's going up. I'm, yeah, yeah, it's going up. I'm guessing that that's not the real time to transmit. We haven't really taken a good look at Minmus. It's looking much more complicated than usual, much greener. It used to be sort of a blue, maybe blue-green, but now it's very green and brown, at least from this distance. Okay, ignition. Okay, it's satisfied. And I'm satisfied too. Okay, so we got that contract done. Right? Well, maintain stability. There we go. All done. So we got at least one of the satellites done. It was supposed to be the Moonsat, but ended up in around Minmus instead. I don't know how long the photographic data is going to take. Probably too long for me to sit around out here watching it. I'll tell the goo to try and do something. Oh, I guess we can't start a second one. Even though that one's depleted and useless. Let me just stop. me. I, I should stop that and see if this one can run. Okay, it is running. Well, hopefully it'll do something. I don't know. Okay, so there we go. Around in this, there's Kerbin, there's the moon. And with this view, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.